In section 10.1, we're looking at radicals and radical functions. Our objectives are to find square roots, approximate roots, find cube roots, find nth roots, and find the nth root of a to the n, where a is a real number, and graph square and cube root functions. Just a quick review of uh, radicals of, and roots. We have powers, such as 2 to the second power is 4, 2 to the third power is 8, 2 to the fourth power is 16, and so on. So a to the nth power is b. And these powers do relate to square roots and nth roots and so on. So in terms of the roots, 2 is a square root of 4, 2 is a cube root of 8, 2 is the fourth root of 16, and a is the nth root of b. We can use radical signs to represent roots. The square root of 4 is the square root of 2 squared, which is 2. The cubed root of 8 is 2. The fourth root of 16 is 2. And the nth root of b, where that equals the nth root of a to the n is equal to a. Now in terms of the parts of the radical signs, we have the degree, the n, Okay, if it doesn't have an index there, it's automatically assumed to be 2 for square roots. We also have the radical sign, and what's underneath the radical sign is what we call the radicand. Let's find each square root and assume that all variables represent non-negative real numbers. The square root of 25 is 5, and we know that because... 5 to the second power is equal to 25, so the square root of 25 is equal to 5. The square root of 1 ninth is 1 third, and we know that because 1 third to the second power is 1 ninth. So the square root of 1 ninth is 1 third. One third is our answer. The square root of 0 0.04 is equal to 0 0.2. And we know that because 0.2 to the second power is 0 0.04. So the square root of 0 0.04 is 0 0.2. 0 0.2 is our answer. The negative square root of 49 is negative 7. We can check this by taking 7 and raising it to the second power to get 49 and then make it negative. So negative square root of 49 is negative 7. The square root of x squared is x. And we know this because if you take x and raise it to the second power, you get x squared. So the square root of x squared is x, and that is our answer. In letter F, we're looking at the square root of 4x to the fourth. And that square root is 2x to the second, and we can check our work by squaring our answer. Take 2x to the second and square it using the power rule for exponents, 2 to the second power is 4, and x to the second to the second power, power to a power, you multiply the exponents together. So the square root of 4x to the fourth is 2x squared, and that's our answer. Let's look at example g. The square root of 16x to the tenth. The square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of x to the tenth is x to the fifth. You can check your answer by taking 4x to the 5th and squaring it. You're going to square both, both terms. The 4 to the 2nd power is 16, and x to the 5th to the 2nd power, using the power to the power rule, you get x to the 10th power. So the square root of 16x to the 10th is 4x to the 5th. In example h, we have the negative square root of 100 x to the 36th power, and that answer is negative 10, the square root of 100 is 10, and the square root of x to the 36th is x to the 18th power. 
We can check our answer by taking the 10x to the 18th power and squaring it, and we get 10 squared, which is 100, x to the 18th to the second power, power to a power, we multiply those powers together to get x to the 6th, 36th power. So our final answer, the square root of negative 100x to the 36th power is negative 10x to the 18th power. In these examples, we're going to approximate each square root to three decimal places. The best way to do this is to use a scientific calculator and to locate the square root button on your calculator. It could be in a few different places. Uh, consult your manual that came with your calculator or if you um, do a Google search on how to do certain square roots or cubed roots and so on for your specific calculator, there's tons of videos out there. So if your calculator has these kinds of buttons here, you would want to um, use this button right here for your square root. If you're doing cubed roots, you want to use this feature here, but notice that it's in yellow. So in order to use that, you want to make sure you're using the shift button along with the x to the third button. Um, and other nth roots could be done using this feature right here. So you're gonna use the shift and then this button here. So if you wanna do the third root, you would do type the three and then shift this button here and then the value. So make sure you're familiar with your calculator and how you can evaluate radicals, square roots, cubed roots, and so on. If your calculator screen looks like one of these, you, you can locate the square root button right above the x squared button and notice that it's the color blue, so you want to use that second and then that button to do any square roots. You also have nth roots that are done using this button here. Again, notice that it's in blue, so you press the, the root, if it's the third root or the um, fourth root or so on, you would use that button here. If your calculator screen looks something like this, the square root button is located right here. So you would press the number and the square root. Sometimes you press that value and then the number. Uh, so take into consideration which calculator you have and practice this. We also have a cubed root. It's in a green print, so use the second and then that button. And then for some of the other roots, the nth roots, you want to use this button right here. So press second and that for other nth roots. Take the time to learn your calculator so that you'll be able to do these quickly for assignments, quizzes, and tests. So let's approximate each square root and round to three decimal places using our scientific calculators. The square root of 11 is 3.317 when you round it to three decimal places. And the way you can check that is to take 3.317 and raise it to the second power and you should get something very close to 11. So since we rounded 3.317, it's not going to give you exactly 11, but it should give you something very close. So our answer is 3.317. Now the square root of 37, well I know the square root of 36 is 6, so I know it should be something a little bit more than 6. And on the calculator we see that it's 6.083. And you can check that by taking 6.083 and squaring it, and you should get something very close to 37. So our answer, square root of 37, is 6.083. The square root of 113 is 10.630. And again, you can check that by taking your 10.630 to the second power, and you should get something very close to 113. So our answer is 10.630. The square root of 205 is 14.318. Check it by taking 14.318, which is rounded to the second power. You'll get something very close to 205, and that's a squiggly equal sign, which is an approximation. Our answer is 14.318.
Let's find each cube root and assume that all variables represent non-negative real numbers. The cubed root of 8 is 2. And we can check that by taking our answer 2 and raising it to the third power. And that gives us 8. So the cubed root of 8 is equal to 2. Cubed root, you're looking for perfect cubes. The cubed root of the fraction 1 over 64 is 1 fourth. And we can check that by taking 1 fourth and raising it to the third power. And that we get 1 over 64. So our answer to the cubed root of 1 over 64 is 1 fourth. Now in terms of variables, take into consideration here we want to find the cubed root of x to the sixth and that is going to be x to the second power. And the way you can check this is to take x to the second power, raise it to the third power, and a power to a power you multiply. So we're looking for perfect cubes, and that's going to be x squared. Now the cubed root of negative 64x to the ninth y to the twelfth is negative 4, because the cubed root of negative 64 is negative 4, x to the third, y to the fourth power. We can check our answer by taking negative 4, x to the third, y to the fourth power, all to the third power, and we're sharing that exponent. Negative 4 to the third power is negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4, or negative 64. And power to a power, you multiply those powers. So 3x to the 3rd to the 3rd is x to the 9th. y to the 4th to the 3rd is y to the 12th. So our answer is negative 4x to the 3rd, y to the 4th. Now let's practice finding each nth root. The 4th root of 16 is equal to 2. And if you were to factor 16, one way to look at 16 is 4 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2, 2 times 2. So we know that 2 to the 4th is equal to 16, so the 4th root of 16 is equal to 2. Our answer is 2. Now the negative 4th root of 81 is negative 3. We can check our answer by taking the 3 and raising it to the 4th power and then make it negative, and we would get negative 81. So our answer is negative 3. Now the 4th root of negative 81 is not a real number. Whenever you have an even root of a, of a va value, this value, the argument or the radicand inside, must be positive. So this is not a real number. If you try using your calculator, you'll see that you get an error. So whenever you're taking the square root, the fourth root, the sixth root, any even root, the radicand must be positive. The fifth root of negative 32x to the 20th is negative 2x to the fourth. You can check your answer by taking negative 2x to the 4th and raising it to the 5th power. We're going to take each of those amounts, those parts of the solution, and raise it to the 5th power. And negative 2 to the 5th power is negative 32. And x to the 4th to the 5th power to a power, you're going to multiply to get x to the 20th. So our answer is negative 2x to the 4th. The fourth root of x to the 16th power is x to the 4th power. You can check this answer by taking x to the 4th power and raising it to the 4th power. And using the power rule for exponents, we multiply those exponents to get x to the 16th. So our final answer is x to the 4th. The fifth root of 32 is equal to 2. You can check that by taking 2 to the fifth power, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and that is equal to 32. So our answer is 2. Now the fourth root of 256x to the 12th y to the 8th is 
4. The fourth root of 256 is 4. x to the third, y to the second. We can check this answer by taking 4x to the third, y to the second, and raising it to the fourth power. 4 to the fourth power is 256. Power to a power, we multiply the exponents to get x to the twelfth and y to the eighth. So our answer is 4x to the third, y to the second. In these problems, we're going to simplify and assume that the variables represent any real number, so that x could be positive or negative values. Typically, when we're simplifying radicals, evaluating the square root and through and so on, we give the primary or principal square root, which is the positive square root. So we need to consider that when we're writing our answers. Let's work on the square root of the negative 6 squared. If you do the powers first, that's the square root of 36, and our answer is 6. Now 6 squared is 36, so our answer is 6. Now the cubed root of negative 27 to the third power, whenever the index is the same as the power, these will simplify, and negative 27 to the third power, well this can be written as the cubed root of negative 19,683, and when we evaluate that, we get negative 27. Negative 27 is our answer because if we were to check negative 27 and raise it to the third power, we would get negative 19,683. The square root of 16x to the second power is 4, oops, sorry, 4x. And we were going to put absolute values around the x here because we're assuming that the variables can represent any real number, including positive and negatives. And when we give our answers, we want to give the principal square root. So we can check our answers by taking 4x and squaring it, or 4 times the absolute value of x, and that gives us 16x squared. So our final answer is 4 times the absolute value of x. If f of x is equal to the cubed root of x plus 2, solve as indicated. In part a, we want to find f of 0. f of 0 is found by replacing the x in the function with 0 to get the cubed root of 0 plus 2. And that is 0 plus 2, which is equal to 2. So f of 0 is equal to 2. And the point 0, 2 is a point that's on the graph of that function. Let's find f of negative 8. We're replacing the x in the function with negative 8 to get the cubed root of negative 8 plus 2. The cubed root of negative 8 is negative 2. So when we plug in negative 8, this simplifies to 0. And that corresponds to a point, negative 8 comma 0. The domain is all real numbers. For the cubed root of x, x could be any negative or positive. When you're looking at square roots or fourth roots or any even roots, the radicand must be positive. So there are restrictions on the domain. But for the cubed root, there is no restriction, so the domain is any real number. And then to graph this, you can make a table of values and plot points to see the overall picture. Now I've gone ahead and made a table of values so we can get a better uh, sketch and we can plot those points. Negative 8, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 3, and 8, 4. So that should give us enough points to get a general idea of the shape of this cubed root of x plus 2 function.